our cooled sheet cake, half sheet cake, on a cookie rack. I actually wired this cookie rack together so that I could cool my sheet cakes on it. I'm sure they make bigger cookie racks, but I've been doing it this way for years, so that's how I continue to do it. But this has been cooling, so it's just barely warm in the center, so it's ready to start trimming. And when I make my sheet cakes, I usually trim off the edges because they get really, really done, really crispy from, you know, the baking process. So I just cut just the, the very edge off of that. Not, you know, we don't want to waste cake, so not too much. And I, I like to use uh, this Ginsu knife. I've been using this for six years now. Yeah, that nice clean edge now instead of a brown crusty edge. Now you could put a uh, half sheet cardboard on top of this and then, you know, ice it seamlessly. But for what I'm actually doing right now, these are going to be tasting cakes. So I'm just taking my Wilton cardboard here and putting that on top because these are just going to go straight into the box. Flip it over. See, this is where I just wired it together there. Kind of center this on the board. I'm going to take my turntable and then I'm going to take my uh, turntable extender from Innovative Sugar Works. This just pops right onto the turntable. And the reason I like this is because it doesn't move around. So if you were to use a cutting board and put it on top, it still could potentially move around. But this just fits right on there and it's kind of genius. So now this is uh, all trimmed down. Looks very nice. Trim off any edges you might have missed. And then some people like to trim off the top, uh, but I actually leave mine just how it is. But I am gonna pop this into the freezer to get it really chilled before I start doing my crumb coat and all of that because it is still warm in the center. So if I were to crumb coat it now, my icing would melt. And that's not what we want. And I also want to be able to split this in half so that I can put a filling in it. So I want it to get real firm in the freezer so that I can trim it up and put a filling in it without any problems of it uh, breaking or you know falling apart. And by the way, this recipe for my vanilla cake is on my website, artisancakecompany.com slash recipes. Okay, so our cake is all chilled in the freezer. And I'm just going to run my knife just about an inch in, all the way around. Just to start my cutting process. And then I'm going to make little sawing motions. Do not force this, just go slowly, all the way around. And we're just sawing more and more towards the center. Keep your knife nice and level. Don't try and force it. Just let the knife do the work. All right. Now I should be able to just lift this off. Just place that right over there. And I have just a couple of little rough spots, so it's no big deal. Got my nice, beautiful crumb on the inside of the cake. And I'm just gonna put a thin layer of my strawberry syrup that is uh, in my book that just came out, Artisan Cake Company's Visual Guide to Cake Decorating. And uh, I just like this for when I do my lemon cake. You don't have to obviously do this. I just like this because it makes it nice and uh, moist for my first layer. And then I'm gonna take some of my strawberry buttercream, which is again, just some of my strawberry syrup worked into some Swiss meringue buttercream, and that's gonna be my filling. I'm gonna put a nice thick layer of the buttercream on the inside. And because these boards are not super strong, this uh, turntable extender really helps me keep my board from bending so I don't get any cracks down the center, which is very nice, I must say. It takes about a batch and a half to two batches of Swiss Marine buttercream. 
This uh, strawberry buttercream tastes a lot like strawberry ice cream, like Neapolitan ice cream. That's totally what it tastes like. At least to me it does. I think it'd actually be really good with chocolate cake and uh, maybe vanilla frosting and strawberry filling. You have like a Neapolitan cake. Actually, don't do that. That's my idea. Don't take my idea. All right, so I'm gonna take my top. Let's see, if this was not chilled, we'd have a real problem moving that top around. Just press that down. And I like to use the Swiss Meringue Buttercream because it has butter in it, so it makes everything nice and, nice and stiff and firm. So now I'm gonna take some of my regular white vanilla buttercream, Swiss Meringue still, and I'm just gonna do a quick crumb coat all over this cake. And we call it a crumb coat because you're literally sealing in the crumbs. The purpose is not to be making a nice layer of buttercream. The purpose is to seal in the crumbs so that when we go and put our final coat of buttercream on here, we don't get crumbs from the cake inside of our final finish because we want it to be nice and pretty. So once we seal this all with buttercream, I'm going to put it back into the freezer till it's pretty firm, I'd say at least a couple hours or you could put it into the fridge to chill overnight. It's a nice thin layer of buttercream and into the freezer we go. If you put this into the fridge, the buttercream is actually going to seal in the moisture of the cake. So you don't have to worry about it getting dried out from being in the fridge because it is protected by the buttercream. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, phase two. We're going to coat our large cutting board in a layer of shortening. And we're going to take our parchment. Nice long piece of parchment. our regular white buttercream, vanilla buttercream or what, whatever buttercream you're using. And we're just going to put a nice layer. I'm not a very good buttercream person, decorator. And buttercream is definitely my weakness. So obviously, you know, a lot of people, they can do this without these cheats. And this might seem more difficult to you if you're doing it, if, you, if you're able to ice a buttercream cake with no problem. But this is just a tutorial for the way that I do it because I have to work around my weaknesses. All right. And then I'm actually going to just build up these corners just a tad because remember this was a rounded cake so this will just make it a little bit flatter on top and because our cake is pretty pretty darn chilled it's going to set up really fast. So build up all the edges. Don't worry if it's perfect or not. And then Grab onto this with the whole, holding the edges of the paper so it doesn't flip off. So you got your hands holding the paper on both sides. And we're going to just quickly put this right on top. So it seems kind of scary, but it should be okay. I'm just going to press this down, wiggle it, give it a little wiggle. Just look down, make sure that basically you want the buttercream to start squishing out. Because we're getting out all the air 
and this is what makes it flat, right? So now, with one hand underneath the sheet cake, and one hand on top, one, two, three, up, and flip over. I know that seems very scary, but because everything's chilled, you know, it, it's fine. It's not, I mean, it's sandwiched between two boards, so it's not going to fly off. I'm just going to peel off my board. It's a little stuck on. I've got a spot that's sticking, so I'm just using a knife to just kind of cut the cake away from the board. So don't do this. Put, put parchment between the board and the cake because we want it to come off before we're done decorating. And then we'll put the board back on. So I'm sorry, I forgot that part. I'm just gonna pull this this way just a tad so that I have enough space around the whole cake. Now I'm just gonna start adding in my second layer of buttercream. Very helpful for the next step. By the way, I do my square cakes exactly the same way. Go figure, huh? They're just usually not this big. So next we're going to use something called a Fat Girl Bench Scraper. This thing is awesome for helping you to get really straight lines around your cakes. So we take our bench scraper and we're just gonna hold it kind of at a 45 degree angle and slowly just straight up and down. It's just resting right on top of the cutting board. And it basically makes a nice straight. It's always best to start at the corner and then work your way back towards the center. Just keep on shaving off little by little. You can always build your corners up if you need to. So when it looks okay, like this is about smoothed out to the okay stage, I'm gonna toss this back into the freezer for probably 20 minutes or so, just to get the outside buttercream to chill up even harder so that I can really work on getting my corners super sharp. Just gonna make sure that I build those up. When cold buttercream is a little bit easier to scrape down. It's a little bit warm in my kitchen, so I'm gonna put this back in the freezer for about 10, 10, 20 minutes. Okay, back on the board. Let's see if I can line it up where it was before. These boards are seriously so flimsy. Not my favorite. Again, sandwich between your hands. One, two, three, flip. So off comes the cutting board. And then we peel off our parchment. We have a nice flat top. Much flatter than what I would be able to do without the parchment. So now you can just take your bench scraper and just clean up the edges and that's basically it. Once you have your corners about finished and you feel like they're almost smooth, just turn your smoother bench scraper horizontally to finish smoothing the corners. And it gets that nice sharp edge.
couple little spots in the top that have some some wrinkles and some pits. So I'm just going to put like a very, very thin layer of buttercream over the top. And I'm actually going to put ganache over the top of this, so this isn't actually 100% necessary. But just for this, just in case, you know, you're not putting ganache on the top of your sheet cake, I wanted to show you exactly how to get it perfectly smooth. So that's it guys, that's how you make a perfectly square, perfectly level uh, half sheet cake. You can also do this with quarter sheet cake. This is how I do all of my squares because I just suck up buttercream. Of course you can do it a different way, but this is how I do it. And I hope you picked up a couple of tips that were helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you're a patron, thank you very much for being a patron and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.